part? Will you decide what man shall live and what man shall die? It may be in the sight of heaven that you are less worthy and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. Tis true to speak. Enough, we must go on. Come. Now, man. Now, what's he? I see my nephew with his family. Hear how heartily he laughs and how they join him. What else? They joke about me. They laugh that I miss the dinner they offered. And yet in truth, they seem to wish for my presence. You observe well. They came to play. I remember that. Let's join in your fun. I leave you now. My life upon this globe is very brief. Our spirits lie so short. Mine ends tonight. Hark, the time is drawing near. I go, but another comes. I'm in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You are about to show me the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Is that so? Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. But I know that your purpose is to do me good. And as I hope to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you company and do it with a thankful heart. Will you not speak to me? Lead on. Lead on, spirit. I hear voices, men and women, talking of one who is dead. They rejoice in his death and speak with cold dislike. They quarrel over his possessions. Even the sheets from his bed and the curtains from his windows. They have even taken his shirt from his dead body. Spirit! Tis with horror our witnesses! I see. I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. I beg you, let me see some tenderness connected with death that I may forget the horror of what I've just heard. I beg you, lead on. Once again, the ghost of Christmas yet to come beckons Bruce to follow, first leading him past the window of his own counting house that he might look in. Scrooge hastened to see what the future held for him there, but saw nothing he recognized. 